it's already time to prepare for new comic book day. So let's take a look at what's coming out this week so I can tell you what I'm getting. What's up guys, BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them, all for your viewing pleasure. If you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back. On this channel, I do comic book reviews, character overviews, and all sorts of other things to help you get into this hobby that we all love called comic books. So if you're new and you'd like that type of content, consider subscribing. Now, today, I'm giving you the latest in the series I like to call what I'm getting, which is basically where I take a look at the books coming out in the upcoming week. I tell you what's on my pull list, what's on the chopping block, and what's on the maybe list, books that I'll be making a game day decision on. Now, this week, it's a pretty stacked week for new comic books. It's the last week of the month, and you know, they're holding no punches and a lot of books that I'm excited for. Perhaps there are no books that I'm excited for more. Then Blood Syndicate Season 1, Issue Number 5. Blood Syndicate, written by Jeffrey Thorne, art by Chris Cross. Uh, it's just a great series. Now, Blood Syndicate is the last of the first wave of Milestone Returns uh, miniseries, right? So we've had Season 1 of Icon, Hardware, Static, and this is Blood Syndicate. And Blood Syndicate is known for being like the grittiest of the original milestone titles, um, which is interesting because a lot, most of the milestone titles, maybe besides Static, had a sort of level of grit or toughness to them. Like that, there's something intangible, something that I can't put into words that the original milestone stuff had. But anyway, this Blood Syndicate series has that as well. One thing different, or one difference between the new Blood Syndicate series. And the original Blood Syndicate series is the old series. You kind of jump straight in and you got a sort of ride along character and you got to just see the Blood Syndicate in action from day one or day one of the series anyway. And this one, you kind of got like a slow pan introducing every member of the Blood Syndicate uh, individually, as well as like how they come together. And then in this issue. Sorry to bury the lead. This issue, we're finally getting more insight into Holocaust, who is the main series villain. Now, Holocaust has been tearing stuff up for the last four issues, uh, just wreaking havoc on Dakota City and Paris Island specifically, which is basically the hood in Dakota. Um, and hey, he's like trying to take over. He's basically on his Beanie Siegel, get down or lay down. And we're trying to figure out why. And this issue, is going to give us more insight into how he got the status that he does, what he wants, why he wants it, and just how far he's willing to go to get it. Now, this is the penultimate issue of season one, so I expect this is going to set up quite the epic finale between Holocaust and the Blood Syndicate in issue six. But let's go ahead and focus on issue five, because it's the book I'm most excited for this week. If you're not picking up this series, see if your shop's got the back issues, because you're going to want to read it. But Blood Syndicate Season 1, Issue 5 has a cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. I'm probably grabbing cover B2 by Kanan White. <sighs> I got to stop buying extra stuff. But anyway, let's move on with the rest of the DC Comics pull list, starting with Action Comics Issue 1047. Now, the World World Saga officially ended. Uh, in the Superman War World Apocalypse one-shot issue. So in Action Comics 1047, what we should be seeing is the return of Superman to Metropolis and the reunification of the Clark Kent family, which is going to be fun. It's going to be a great heartwarming issue. I love this triumphant cover. Uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson has been doing a great job with Action Comics, and I don't expect that to slow down now. We've got this whole return of Superman kind of arc that's supposed to be happening. And I believe this is the first issue of that crossover between Action Comics and Superman, Son of Kal-El. Uh, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be real fun. And uh, that's Action Comics issue 1047. It's got a cover price of $4.99. I'm just getting cover A. Next up on the pull list is DC versus Vampires issue number nine. DC versus Vampires, uh, written by Matthew Rosenberg and James Tynan. I don't remember who's on art. It kind of rotates. There's a few different artists that have been on the series. 
uh, I can't lie. I'm behind on this series. I was turned off by the amount of uh, uh, tie-in or like sister series they were doing. Like I didn't buy the All Out War. As a matter of fact, I think the last thing I read in the DC Vampires franchise was a DC versus Vampire Hunters one shot featuring Damian Wayne. So I definitely got some catching up to do, but it's a nice, fun Elseworlds story. Uh, not quite as hard of a punch as Deceased, at least from what I've read, but it's vampires and you got a lot of vampire lore in the story. So cool stuff. DC, DC Vampires number nine has a cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And the last book on my DC pull list is Detective Comics issue 1064. Detective Comics written by Ram V with art by Raphael Albuquerque. Uh, we've also got a uh, backup story by Cy Spurrier with art by Danny. Uh, funny enough, I didn't read issue 1063. I got really excited because it had this really awesome Jim Lee cover. And I just realized I never actually <laughs> I never actually read the book. Uh, so I got to go back and read it. Uh, the first issue was kind of like mm, a slow starter, but by the end of it, I was intrigued by this mystery. Hopefully issue two kind of built on that and kept the momentum going. Um, yeah. So I got two Detective Commons issues to read this week, 1063 and 1064, but 1064 has a cover price of $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A this week. And that's it for the DC Comics pull list. So as long as I stick to the list and don't buy extra books, I'm probably buying extra books. But as long as I stick to the list, my DC total is going to be $18 this week, which isn't bad. Not bad at all. All right. So we got DC out of the way. Let's move on to Marvel Comics, where I got to admit, <laughs> I'm the sucker this week. So the I spent all week and this weekend getting caught up on the AXE Avengers X-Men Eternals Judgment Day event. I read Judgment Day 1 through 5, Death of the Mutants 1 and 2, and all the other tie-ins that are in the current X-Men books. I even read Marauders number 6. Didn't really enjoy that one, but I read all of the X tie-ins. And Judgment Day number 5. Um Let's just say, how about this? So if you're not caught up on the event, basically there is a conflict between some of the Eternals and the X-Men. The Eternals view the X-Men as an excess deviation and want to wipe them off the face of the planet. And they figure if they can end the resurrection protocol, then that's good enough, right? And so they've been going after the resurrection protocol. Um, and so the Avengers and the X-Men have teamed up to try to stop it. So they tried to raise like a godlike figure, an eternal like godlike figure to uh, stop the carnage and the mayhem. And that uh, robot celestial figure that they have raised up from the dead or whatever has decided, yeah, nah, nah, it's time to put judgment on all of you. So this robot is determining who's going to live and who's going to die. And uh, let's just say there's a whole lot of people dying. And um, so with the X-Men, they've had to be really selective about who they resurrect because there are, there is a limited number of eggs available. So, you know, you gotta be, you gotta be careful who you resurrect. You gotta be strategic. Who are you gonna need? What skills are you gonna need in this fight if you're gonna win? And Judgment Day number five had a resurrection that I did not expect. And, um, that resurrection or that last panel says it's going to be continued in this week's book, uh, Avengers X-Men Eternals. Avengers, number one. So this is the first of the tie-in one-shots that isn't a part of any other series. It's just a one-shot just for the uh, uh, Judgment Day event. And I had just said last week that I was tired of all these events and I was going to not subscribe to any tie-in if I wasn't already on the main title. And now I got to eat my words because... Judgment Day number five was so good. I want to see how it continues and I don't want to skip anything. So Avengers X-Men Eternals, Avengers number one is on the pull list this week with a cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. <sighs> Eating my words. They don't taste as good in the back. But anyway, uh, 
Uh, next up is another Judgment Day tie-in. In fact, every book on the list this week is a Judgment Day tie-in. Uh, this next one is Amazing Spider-Man issue number 10. Now, interestingly enough, Amazing Spider-Man number 9 was sort of a tie-in to the Hellfire Gala, which was a lead-in to Judgment Day. Um, and, you know, in Judgment or in Spider-Man number 9, we got like a, a interesting, very brief moment between Peter and MJ. And all of a sudden, in issue 10, we're having a teased moment between Peter and Gwen Stacy, Gwen Stacy's ghost, Gwen Stacy's clone. What's going on? If you're reading Judgment Day, I think you have a good idea as to how Gwen Stacy is appearing. I think I have a good idea as to how Gwen Stacy is appearing. Either way, it should be a nice heartfelt issue because how often do you get Spider-Man reflecting about Gwen Stacy? So... I'm down. I'm down. Hopefully this actually does something to move the actual plot of Spider-Man forward as well. But even if it's just like a nice Judgment Day Spider-Man moment, I won't be mad at it. Cover price on this one is $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And the last book on the Marvel pull list this week is X-Men issue number 15. Uh, now, again, in issue number 14 of X-Men, uh, I talked about this on the Hangout last week, but it was basically an Iceman focused issue. And I thought it was pretty a good issue, but the last three to four pages really kind of tied back into Judgment Day with Cyclops being judged. And I won't say the results of his judgment, but I thought it was an interesting character moment for Cyclops. And I expect them to pick up on that in this, this week's issue of X-Men. And um I think how Cyclops responds in this issue is going to determine how the Judgment Day event goes, even if the event is, you know, semi-predictable. You can almost always guess how these events are going to turn out. Or maybe not. So X-Men number 15 has got a cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And that's the last of the Marvel books on my pull list. So if I just stick to the list this week, my Marvel comics are going to cost me $12. Not a bad Marvel week either. So let's move on to the indies where the last book on my pull list this week is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Armageddon Game, number one. Now, The Armageddon Game, it was billed as a summer event that was going to like be separate from the main TMNT title. Turns out, the main TMNT title and the Armageddon Game opening moves little prelude series they did have all been sort of weaving in and out of the same story. And silly me, I haven't been reading any of it. But uh, the Armageddon game number one is being billed as the official beginning of this summer Ninja Turtles event. So much so that I think I'll be able to read this without reading any of the other stuff and not be super lost. But what I will tell you is what the solicitor will tell you. And that is that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are being led by Shredder against the Rat King. So I definitely want to go back and read what I missed because I got to figure out how in the world Shredder became a part of this whole equation. But uh it should be a pretty fun event, right? Like Shredder leading the Ninja Turtles. That's just something you don't see every day or any day or uh, apart from a random event ever, right? So TMNT, the Armageddon game, number one. It's got a cover price of $5.99, which makes it the most expensive book on my pull list this week. That means I definitely need to read it. ASAP, and I'll let you know my thoughts on it on the review of the week during the hangout this Thursday night. But anyway, $5.99. And funny enough, I usually go for the Kevin Eastman covers on anything Ninja Turtles, but I think I like the cover A better. So I'm going to stick with the cover A this week. And that's it for the indies on my pull list. So if I just stick to the list and buy the one book and no variants, my indie total is going to be $6, which brings my grand total for the week up to a whopping. $36, which leaves me $14 of playroom in the budget. So that Blood Syndicate uh variant that I want, that'll be covered. And I still got like six more dollars to work with after that. And I'm thinking there's room for one more book on the pull list. So the maybe list, the big maybe list book this week is Tim Drake Robin number one. Tim Drake Robin. I've never read a book with Tim Drake as Robin besides uh, James Tynan's Detective Comics. Um, Tim Drake was the Robin in Batman the Animated Series after a little while, once Nightwing became Nightwing. And, and 
uh, Tim Drake is the current Robin in the Batman series by Chip Zdarsky. Now, Damien's my favorite Robin, but I respect Tim Drake as being like the computer genius and the almost greatest detective there ever was. So I'm curious to see what a Tim Drake Robin series looks like in 2022. The one thing that's got me not as excited about this series is the art is going to be done by Riley Rosmo. No disrespect to Riley Rosmo, but he's the one who did the art on the most recent Harley Quinn series. And I just didn't feel like that style fit the type of superhero stories that I like to read. Um, so because his art's not my personal preference, that puts a lot of pressure on the story to be really good for me to continue the series. So the number one issue is on the maybe list. I'm probably going to pick it up, but who knows if it's going to actually earn a spot on my pull list. We'll have to wait and see. So that's the book that's on the maybe list this week. It's got a cover price. I didn't write down the cover price. My guess is that it'll be $4.99. And that's the cover A I showed you. So that's it for what's on my pull list this week. I would love to know what you're grabbing. Anything on my list sound interesting to you? I think the uh, Blood Syndicate is going to be dope, but it's issue five. So if you're looking for something new, I would say jump on. Ooh, all of these are kind of in the middle of story arcs. So I'd say jump on the Armageddon game. That'd probably be really fun if you're a Turtles fan. I also think Action Comics 1047 will be a nice jumping in point as well, especially if you like Clark versus John Kent. So those would be my two top recommendations for someone who's not reading any of the things on my list this week. But look, let me know what you recommend in the comments down below. This video would not be possible without the contributions of the channel members. That's right. We've got a membership so you can join at the squad level or at the family level to help make content on this channel happen every single day. So shout out to all the squad members. And if you'd like to join, links are in the description below. Hope you saw something you liked in this video. And if not, Hey, that's cool. You can always buy what you like. Just make sure you read what you buy and be nice to others because kindness makes the world go round. Peace.